Okay, so thanks for joining me. In this video we're going to discuss how to add uniformat classification codes to families inside of Revit and we're also going to cover how to add uniformat classification codes by using schedules to uh, change the codes by family instance inside the model. Uh, so firstly we're going to go ahead and open Revit, which I've already got open here. Now you can see in Revit, I'm going to use the project browser and I'm going to go down to my families. You can add the uniform classification codes uh, by instance of a wall, uh, but it's better if you add the classification codes obviously by the family, that way they're in each of the families when you're modeling away in the, uh, in the project. So I'm going to go here and open a family which is is nicely named in accordance with the Beacon Pim Guide. So we're going to click on that family and we're going to go type properties. Okay, so now we're looking at the family, uh, the system family for this type of wall. You can see there it's got the type name which is um, in accordance with the Beacon guidelines and standards, and you can see there in the structure it sets out uh, the structure and materials of the wall. Uh, for your records, this structure here does not export to export, sorry, to uh, Costex, nor does it export to Navisworks. So this information is lost uh, to Beacon Consulting inside of Costex, which is why we ask you to put the detailed uh, wall breakdown using the naming structure provided. So what we want to do is we want to add in the uh, the uniform classification codes and we want to add those into the assembly code area. So in your identity data you've got your assembly codes and because we've uploaded the uniform classification file um, which I've shown you how to do in video one uh, you can go ahead now and select the different elemental code basically um, which helps us to sort the data at our end. So you can see there there's a number of uh, different elemental codes. Um, in the early stages of design all we really want to do is go ahead and pick um, if it's a block wall we want you to pick a block wall. If it's a smoke wall we want you to pick a smoke wall. If it's a metal frame firewall we want to try and pick a metal frame firewall. It really comes back to just uh, trying to put a little bit of intelligence into modeling as early as you can. Obviously the more information that we have as quantity surveyors the easier it is for us to to set the project and, and to price it accordingly. So this wall is obviously a block wall. It's got linings either side of it, but in essence it's a block wall. So we're going to go ahead and select concrete block walls and click OK. Click apply. Click OK. Now if I go back into there, you can see that the assembly code uh, has been updated with the elemental code. When I export that into Costex, uh, it allows me to filter those walls by that elemental code um, and create them in the right categories when we're importing the data into Costex. Now I'll show you one other way to go through and update uh, the assembly types inside of the families and the wall instances. Now this method for updating the assembly uh, codes is basically a, a good idea maybe towards the end of the modeling process or towards the end of documentation when you're going through and you're, um, you're tidying up the model uh, attributes. So if we go into schedules and we create a new schedule and we want to create a schedule save the project and we're going to do a schedule of walls and we're going to schedule in phase two. Okay. And we're going to add the area, assembly code, assembly code description, assembly name, family, and family and type. We're going to add the width. And we're going to description and type. And we're going to click OK. 
and it's created a schedule for us of all the walls. Now you can see in the wall schedule, if I just extend that out, uh, because I've only added the assembly codes to just those couple of families, there's a lot of walls here that don't have obviously the assembly codes imported into them. Okay, So what would be great and what would be best practice for us would be if you interrogated the model, determine which walls are what um, at each of the design phases and go ahead and update those uh, assembly codes inside of uh, the, the schedule um, based on their locations. A good way of doing that is obviously um, I like to uh, show those walls okay, and it'll show me where the walls are located. Okay, that helps me to go back and then go back into the schedule and change that wall to the wall okay, and it's concrete block wall. Now, you'll notice that when I updated that, uh, the schedule automatically went through and put all those assembly codes into all of the different uh, walls that were in that same family type. Okay, so that's just a basic rundown on how to add them using schedules. Uh, it can be time consuming, but realistically it doesn't really take that long. There's maybe 20 minutes working there. Thanks for your time and um, we'll speak again soon. Thanks.